Hi, I'm Ruff from School UK. This is my video about the DJI Neo 2 and active tracking. First, I'll look at using the DJI Flybat on the phone only, not using the controller. And here you can see the app running on my phone. I'm in follow mode and I've pressed start to go. And here I am in follow mode. The drone is set to follow me. So as I walk away, it's tracking me from the behind. You'll see in the middle, you can set the drone in relation to my position. So I've now set it to my right and it's moved over to my right. I'm now pushing it slightly in front of me and now it's right in front of me. And you can go round yourself just pressing the location. I've pushed it all the way around to the back now and the drone is now orientated to my rear. I'm going to use the hand gesture to lift it up slightly. You'll come on to that later. I'm going to pull it to my right. And now as I walk away, it's located at the rear position behind me and he's following me. Circle, rocket, droney, follow, selfie shot. So those are all the different shots. On the front of the Neo 2 is a display. It's on the opposite side to the collision avoidance display here. And to change this, there is a sub menu and a main menu. And you can get into these sub menus and main menus by pressing these two buttons on the side along with the red button. So if I press these buttons now and just scroll through, you'll hear. Selfie shot, droney, circle, rocket, follow. And those are the ones I've already pulled into the main menu. And if you press this here, it'll start it or switch it out if you're in the sub menu. Let's, so let's go across again. And if I press this for a, sh a longer period of time, it'll change it onto the sub menu and we can scroll through those. And then you can come out of it using the red button. Let's have a look at that now. We've got follow, which has three different options. Let's press the first one, hold that down. You've got low flat. and flat, I think. High angle. High angle. Low angle. Low angle. Flat. flat. Three different options. Hold that down again. Hold it. And we've got left, rear left, rear, rear right, right. Those are the points around you, whether it's behind you or in front of you, to your left or your right. Hold that down Front again. right. Close, medium, far. So there's three options. Close, there. medium, far. And those are all of the different options that we have. So if we come out of that. Let's now take an in-depth look at focus tracking and how this works with the controller. I'm now going to turn towards the buggy and I'm going to press the focus tracking enable button top left which is subject scanning so it puts a cross on me and then the menu that you see active track spotlight poi those are the three alternatives and we're in spotlight mode which is the default so you can see it's on spotlight mode in the middle i can move the drone away from me using the sticks but in effect the spotlight mode is like it always is where it stays on me and focuses on me. We're now in point of interest and I can now, which is circling me, I can send the POI into left or right. I'm gonna send it around to the right. I can change and vary the speed by the, the how far I pull the button to the right or to the left. So it's about three quarter speed now. But as I walk and I move, you see I the actual point of interest is moving, which is me, and the point of interest diameter stays the same and moves with me. I'll now slow the point of interest down, pull it to about just under half, and it's going around a lot slower, and it's got the word slow against it, as you can see. We'll now start to have a look at stopping this, 
and look at active track. So I'll press on active track. And as soon as I press on active track, we get this circles to come around. And there's two circles, there's an inner circle and an outer circle. And you can change the distances and the height on both the inner circle and the outer circle. And you can move to the inner and outer circle or any position on that circle. If I click on the three lines on the settings, it shows me the inner and outer radius of the two circles. And it also shows the inner height and the outer height of the two circles as well and you can slide both of these to change them. So I'm actually trying to put active track on now. So I'm gonna track onto the buggy now. And you see it's actually picked up the buggy, but this is an anomaly because it doesn't actually recognize the buggy and it keeps losing it. So subjects, so I wanted to show you this warts and all, and I'm trying to use the buggy and trying to get it to track the buggy. And I've taken it off me and I've moved away and I'm actually just focusing on this buggy, but it will not select it. Now, later on, I'll show you picking up a car. It has no problem tracking a vehicle, but for some reason, it won't pick up this buggy as a vehicle. It just won't pick it up. So let's try an al another alternative if something like this happens, whereas I can go onto the buggy and I'll lock it onto me first so it's now subject scanning me and it's got me as a person and I am now going to drive the buggy and leave it on me and this works now when you see the video footage you wouldn't know it was only tracking me you think it was tracking the buggy but I want to show it you separately now so that you can see it's physically tracking me and I can move this around to the outer circle which I've just done now so it's left side outer circle and it's moved away to the battery level diameter, is low. and then it's come Aircraft up with a low battery return to the home point This is a, in 10 one seconds. of the problems on the Neo 2. It's only at 27% the battery and it's showing a low battery warning and it will terminate the active tracking because of that. And I'll just land it on my hand and we'll get another Landing. battery. Let's resume the tracking now. We've got another battery in and I'll jump on the buggy like I did before, and it's tracking me rather than the vehicle. And we'll try the same thing again. So I've now got it in front of me slightly. And as soon as I move, it will should start to move. And I'm now going to select the left-hand side in a circle. Let's try and pick up a little bit of speed now. And then... As it picks up and starts to pick me up on the side, I'm going to press the outer circle now and let the drone pull away to a higher level on the second circle. And then I'll push my foot down a little bit more, turn to the right, and you can see that it's tracking me clearly and smoothly. And then we'll just come to a halt about there. Now we're at one of my course locations and I'm going to show you vehicle tracking working properly. So this is now locked onto my car and being controlled by a couple of the students. And now as I drive away, the scanning is working. I'm just taking my time now. You can see it's now following me behind on an in the inner circle. So I'm using the inner circle following behind I'm just going to leave it on the inner circle following behind. I'm going to turn to the left, go through the outer part of the car park, and I'm going to turn to the left between a couple of vehicles. And I'm going to put my foot down a little bit here and just accelerate a little bit faster. And it's starting to keep up with me and flying really well. So it tracks vehicles well for a very small drone. And then we'll just come to a halt here. If I click on the three lines on the settings, it shows me the inner and outer radius of the two circles. And it also shows the inner height and the outer height of the two circles as well. And you can slide both of these to change them. Hope this video on tracking has been helpful. If you want to see more videos, subscribe to the channel. Happy flying. Bye for now.